you know, a lot of these reference ranges would be like, you know, 160 to, you know, 620. And that is, that's normal, right? So you get your, you get your B12 back. It's like 200. Well, it's sort of low normal. That's okay. Or 300. Oh, okay. No, that's pretty good. Just like middle of the pack. Uh, no, actually that's a deficiency. Anything below 400, you get neurological damage and you get demyelination of your axons. So B12 is, is, is vital for the myelination of your nerve cells, your axons. And with if that, that's sort of like the insulation on wires and it helps with conductivity and, and with uh, the signal and it protects it as well. And so if you don't have that proper myelination, you can, you can slow down your signal, the, the transduction of your signal, and, uh, and that can be damaged. You can actually get neurological damage. We see this in neurosurgery. We look at MRIs of typically vegans and vegetarians who are chronically B12 deficient. Uh, even when they supplement, sometimes they don't supplement enough, uh, but they need to supplement. And if you have to supplement, then by definition, your diet is deficient. So clearly a vegetarian vegan diet is deficient because they, they are losing out on these, these nutrients. But their spinal cord actually atrophies. And you see this on MRI. Their spinal cords are th more thin than, than just omnivores in the normal public. public. There was actually a study in um, Oxford in 2008 that followed a bunch of people, but you know they had a vegan cohort and they followed them after five years and they did MRIs. And they found that their brains actually shrank by over 5% after five years. And they thought that this was most likely to do with B12 because they had significantly lower B12. But even in the people that had supplemented B12, they, they still actually had significant atrophy as well. So it's not just that, but, you know, is this Dr. Chavy guy, you know, full of crap, you know, like, I don't think coffee is that big of a deal. Maybe I'll, you know, go off for a month and maybe I'll have some coffee, see what happens, go for it, you know, do try that. But, you know, then if you see that going, you know, actually that does affect me, that does cause that I do, I don't feel as good as, uh, as I do otherwise, you know, then you just, just hop back on or, you know, you go out and, you know, people, alcohol is a big one that, that people slip up on and maybe they've been carnivore for several months, but then they're like, man, I really miss drinking. I really miss that social aspect. And they go out drinking. Drinking is well known to lower your inhibitions for eating crap food. Anyway, you eat a lot more high octane garbage, like, you know, processed carbs and sugar anyway. And so, you know, now you're more likely to sort of slip off. And then they did that. So they drink alcohol, they go out and they eat a whole bunch of crap and go like, oh, well, I guess, I guess I just can't do it. You know, well, you can, you know, just get right back on it and it's okay to even experiment and it's okay to even go off, you know, and, and, and drink or have a meal or something like that. If you want to, it's better to do that once every now and then consciously than just give it up and do that every single day. I think that naturally you will find that you just feel so much better that you don't want to do that because I have zero interest in eating this crap because I know what it makes me feel like. And I've done that experiment. I've had things like, okay, well, what does this do to me? And I'm like, I don't like that. I don't want that. You know, I like feeling my best. I like feeling like a superhero 24 seven. I would way rather feel like a superhero 24 seven than eat something nummy sometimes or be drunk sometimes.